Would you agree that uh, a man who is extremely attractive and a woman who is extremely attractive, mm -hmm. when they get together, it's just going to be problems? Um, because the man might be insecure and jealous and the same the woman might be the same it can work really well if they have no kind of concerns and they're happy to lock off all alternatives the, we always match better with people who are equal to us always looks wise finances right are equal we always match better and they it's called the matching hypothesis you actually last longer the problem is these people tend to have too many alternatives when problems arise there's so many alternatives and it doesn't even have to be other men or other women it can be like I'm going to go on holiday with my friends. I'm going to, whereas when you meet people with very little options, you take the average person, you know, when you go back to Leeds and you see couples that have been together for 20, 30 years since you were in high school mm. and they're still together. But if you look at their options, it's less. They're actually more satisfied. So the less options you have, the more invested and satisfied you are in your relationship. So it's actually, unfortunately, more options doesn't mean more happiness. Yeah, because I think if you have more options, you have more desire. Mm. And if you don't f fulfill those desires, then you're going to be unhappy. Yeah, and also when you have more options, you have less tolerance. You're thinking, you can't talk to me like that. I've got so many other guys. Or you're thinking, she can't deny me. I've got so many other options. And so it's that you you have low tolerance for flawed behavior. Mm. Yeah. What would you describe as being a top 1% female? Oh, that's a good question. Um, because I hear it all the time, yeah. men. But well, I, I do think beauty and all these things, you can't ignore that. Like, it, obviously, she has to be aesthetically, she has to be pleasing. But I just think that if she is the most beautiful girl in the world, but she is available and accessible to lots, lots of men, and she's disloyal to you, there, it, there, she loses her value. Because mm -hmm. she makes you look like an idiot and she makes herself look accessible. So without that loyalty factor, and loyalty doesn't just mean she's not sleeping with other men. Loyalty also means she's not exposing herself to other men. Mm -hmm. Because before, you'd have to work to see a girl naked. Really, really have to work for it. If she's allowing access to the rest of the society to see that, I do think it takes away her her, her mystery. So you, a 1% woman would have to make her man look like somebody that other men are jealous of. And now if other men can still see your girlfriend naked then less jealous of you yeah. they're, they're just less jealous of you so well, why, I, uh, why are they doing that then uh, because like I said they get rewarded for it they're they more like likely the to but they're going to meet a 1% man no no but let's say for yeah. example that they're already in a rela relationship yeah. with a, a good guy why did they continue to do it um, I would say if you're in a relationship with a good guy and being satisfied are two different things. I think when you're with a good guy and he treats you well and he's really kind to you, but if you're a chaotic woman mm. and you crave chaos, what will happen is you always need validation from other men. Mm -hmm. You always need reminding that you can be with other men whenever you need it. But if you're a woman who's so happy to stop all of that, just to be with one man, you'll stop posting. If your woman is still posting, there's a part of her that doesn't feel totally satisfied with the love you give her. And it's not got nothing to do with you. It might be to do with her own insecurities before she entered the relationship. Mm. And they, they haven't been resolved yet. But I think there's definitely some couples or individuals who just crave drama. Yeah. Like yeah. I've been with some women who <laughs> they just want to pick fights. They and I'm do. like, what the hell's going uh, on? Well, like, why are you? <laughs> but the, do you think that men tend to, and women, do you think people attach to people who give them more drama? I think they, the excitement makes things more interesting. Yeah. It keeps each other on their toes. Yeah. And they like, get I'm, sh I'm sure if me being the way I am now mm. definitely keeps my partner on her toes. I'm not being like disrespectful or doing anything mm. bad, but there's an element of mystery. Right. So she's. Because I live by myself. Yeah. She's always thinking, mm, like, maybe, maybe, what is he doing? Yeah. Like, is it, is it? And I say, oh, I'm going out for dinner. And mm. then she'd be like, oh, who's going out for dinner? Do you believe in monogamy? Do you believe in being faithful? Or do you think it's difficult in this day and age? I, I do. Yeah. I think it probably is one of the main things which is going to allow for a successful relationship to flourish. I just yeah. think it's really, really hard. And what would it require for you to be monogamous? I just have to be very disciplined. Okay. It, it's, it's, I think it's largely just down to discipline. Because if you are like top 10, top 1% man. Yeah. You're always going to have those options until maybe you get too old. Yeah. And you, it's, you're always going to have the urges. Yeah. Men have urges, sexual yeah. desires with different women. That's just the way it is. And so th agree. those, those men who are in successful relationships and they don't cheat, mm -hmm. 
it's mostly down to the fact that they're extremely disciplined, disciplined and they can control their emotions. And do you think that makes him more high value than a man that is? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, technically, on paper, way yeah, more high, way high value. So do you agree like, with that? Is, that is the ultimate. That is the But the thing is, the ultimate source of high value is self control. If you can exercise self control, you start to respect yourself more. Mm -hmm. Every time, think of the times where you could have cheated and you said no, no, no. you feel like a superhero. You're yeah. like, oh my God, I rejected him. So I feel so good about myself. Or even when you. But not when the relationship's over. <laughs> <laughs> but but I just, yeah, I you know what I mean. Yeah. Or even like um, when it's getting drunk or something like that, and you control yourself. You're like, no, I'm not drinking tonight. And you, every time we exercise self-control, we gain self-respect. And every time we gain self-respect, we gain self-esteem. So the man that is doesn't give in to his impulses is the most free man in the world. Whereas the man that just, if, if I want it, I do it. Because a lot of this red pill kind of conversation is a strong man, as a high value man, is does what he wants. No, the reality is a high value man who can resist temporary desires for long-term goals doesn't drink because he's got work tomorrow doesn't sleep with that girl because he doesn't want to get rid of her in the morning he thinks about his long-term self self-control is true freedom not doing whatever you want because yeah. that's nonsense yeah. and that's a big thing obviously when it comes to getting in shape absolutely that's why there's so many men that struggle to get in yeah. shape not because they're not going to the gym but mm. just because they don't have that discipline outside of the gym mm. they're not eating the things they should be eating. Yeah, they're going out, they're drinking, they're not sleeping. How much self respect you have when you get a mm. six pack? Think of how much you're like, oh my God, how much self esteem and self respect you get when a six pack. Now apply that mentality to women and money. Mm -hmm. If a man can do it for his mind, like if he can do it for money, which is his mind, body, which is women, and gym, imagine how much of a high value man he can self control. And then what it does is it means that no one can drift him. Mm -hmm. He's got a clear goal. Self control is the most amazing thing a high value man can have. Yeah. So, this idea that he has to sleep around with lots of girls and does what he wants, he, what he should want to do is be controlled yeah. by his own kind of long term goals. Mm -hmm. you know? I agree. So I have a load of questions mm. which I have put together based on just going through your Instagram. Oh. <laughs> and this is just general questions on dating and relationships. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about initiating yeah. that first contact. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's... Is, is there a, a better way to approach a stranger? Is it easier to DM somebody or is it better to approach them in person? Uh, depending on who the woman is, depending on who the woman is, I think online there's a lot of competition if she's got an open profile. If she hasn't, then it's a bit easier. In person is always better because people can read your energy. And that is something that you can't always get online. So I think in person, and if you just remove the, the, the reason why men get nervous is they're thinking, is she going to reply? Is she going to say no? She, forget about that. Just make well, I think it. There's, the nerves are much higher in person. Yeah. D DMing yeah, it's someone takes nothing. Do you get nervous asking, so speaking to girls in person? Not anymore. I used yeah. to though. Did you? Why? Well, because it was, I don't know, maybe it was just a fear of rejection. rejection. But who cares if she rejects? There's a yeah, million but I think, I think yeah. what a lot of women don't understand is that <laughs> it's not nice it's to be rejected nice, because yeah. you are, let's say for example, we forget. you see someone you like uh, or you're attracted to, you you know, you know, you actually are building up quite yeah. a lot of this self-confidence and plucking mm. up the courage to go over and speak to her. Yeah. And then for you to literally just get shot down, yeah. it is like, it's, it's quite soul destroying. Is if it? It's, if it, yeah, I can't it really imagine. Is. As a girl, we don't have to experience that. No, it's that, like, yeah. it's, it's, it's hardcore. Yeah. And if, let's say for example maybe you do that two or three times you get shot down three times your confidence is going to be like rock bottom but does it but, sometimes make you immune to getting rejected no, no, but, yeah but that's why i recommend guys just keep doing you it again 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 it. again you get immune to it when you yeah when you do it so often mm -hmm. you do become immune to it so that's why you should it. you should do something that scares you every single day yeah absolutely so you become care. immune to it and you'll find that you'll get rejected by one girl and then another mm -hmm. girl who's better looking than her will be responsive mm -hmm. so it's not really the thing is men personalize rejection so many times it's because she's having a fight with her boyfriend she's had a bad day it's got nothing to do with you a lot of the time there's times where you're in a great mood and there's a guy you're not interested in and you'll still be responsible you're like hey yeah take my number mm. because you're in a good mood and there's other times you're in a terrible mood and you just it doesn't matter who he is you don't want to speak to it don't personalize the rejection it's not about you M most of the time it's not about you I think for me I'm I'm clearly at an, an advantage when it comes yeah. to on, the online, online approach stuff, yeah. because I can send a DM no. and it's like okay well the million followers blue tick and like yeah. the pictures yeah that can work in my favor, but it can also not work in my favor because the type of woman who I'm actually attracted to yeah, is not into guys yeah. like me on the surface. Yeah. 
So there's been a few times I've been with women when they've, they've told me after we've been together for a yeah. while, they're like, when I initially saw your profile, I was like, no way. Like, hell no, am <laughs> yeah. I not, I'm not getting involved with this guy. Yeah. Because they assume the worst. Yeah. Like realistically, you, you come across my profile for the yeah. first time. What do you think? Oh, there'd be no way. I would <laughs> block her. What block am I? This like red flag. Absolutely. You yeah. just think like he's just going to cheat. He's just going to be with a bunch of women. I'm, and also the girl, would, I would think he won't like me. Mm. I, the girl would always just think I'm not going to be enough. Like he won't like me. Well, and I, that's, I, that's what a lot I think of people, majority of girls would they think. They seem to be, oh, you must get loads of DMs. Yeah. And it's not actually as many as you'd think yeah, I because think so. I think. Uh, the, the women probably just look at my profile and just like, wait, no way. Yeah. And they, they, they don't want to be shot down or ignored. Have you ever done like a public relationship where you and your partner like kind of put, make it all about on your Instagram and stuff? Not Instagram, but YouTube. And how, how did that work out? Not well. <laughs> That's why... Uh... How do you find that? Like, how is it? Well, like, so I did it during lockdown. Okay. So um, there wasn't really much to do. Yeah. And I was kind of not only running out of content, yeah. but people were starting to notice that I was with somebody else in my apartment. Right. So I was like, do you know what? I'll just, Yeah. I, I was much more open at that point in time. Right. I, I generally feel like I'm quite open anyway, yeah. but that was the first time I'd, I'd, maybe the second time where I'd really talked about uh, the relationship that I was in. Right. And she was in the videos, we were talking and people were actually like really loving it. Like my mm. views were actually going up because people uh, liked seeing yeah. the, just me with a woman. Yeah. But the problem was, like, I, I've got thick skin, so I can yeah. take any shit which people give me. Mm -hmm. But she oh, didn't course. necessarily. Yeah. So YouTube comments are the absolute worst of all are comments. They and they the, the worst. And because Instagram, like, your identity is linked yeah, to something. a comment. YouTube, yeah. it's anonymous. Right. It's like a weird username and no picture. Yeah. So people are a bit more ruthless. Yeah. So obviously there was... A, it was a load of negative comments about her, maybe the way she looks, whatever it is. Aww. Like, even though she's a beautiful girl, people always have something bad yeah, to say. Yeah, negative to say. So, um, I would just say to her, don't look at the comments. Right. Of course she looks at the of comments. Oh, so okay. that messes with her head. Uh -huh. But I think the, the main sort of issue and problems came about when the relationship ended or came to an end. Mm -hmm. And I kind of foolishly was speaking my thoughts and sharing it with people. Right. And... I, I think the problem was people didn't get the full context of the situation. Yeah. And they were just getting like little snippets of it. Mm -hmm. And actually looking back, I didn't look very good. Right. Like she looked like a victim and I looked like I was doing something really bad. But uh, that wasn't the reality. Right. Because it was it was a point where I was I was leaving Dubai and I was going to Spain. Right. So I was saying how it's it's um it's it's obviously gonna be an issue, like the whole long distance relationship thing. Yeah. But anyway, so there were, I got a load of negative feedback, particularly from women. Right over the way that I handled that right. and I didn't present it yeah, properly. I but then the, the worst part was because I'd been so open sharing mm -hmm. my, my, with my entire community yeah. who she was, everybody knew about her. So the moment that she kind of stopped appearing in the videos, everyone was asking, where is she? Yeah. What's happening? And then everybody would go to her and then ask her the same questions like, where's Mike? What's happened with Mike? What's yeah. going on? <laughs> and she, this was going on for months. Yeah. And even when I came back to Dubai, people started messaging her saying, yeah. you're going to get back with Mike. You're gonna get back. And this wasn't making it easier for her to kind yeah. of get over me. Yeah. And then when I was, I was in Ibiza at the time, so people were, they were watching my stories or other people's stories. Yeah. Maybe I've been there and I'd, other women have been around yeah, course, me. Yeah. They would send that story to her. Yeah. And I'm, it's like, she doesn't need, need to, to be seeing that. We're not in a relationship anymore, but yeah. you're just... And it must be hard for it. her when she moves on, like knowing that, yeah. yeah, who the person... Like, say she was to meet another man, he would be like, that's your ex. It must be a Yeah, well, a hard... it, to be... No, because she wasn't massive on social media. Right. So she's known as Mike Thurston's ex. Yeah, of course. That's that's it's, not it's good. It is what it is. Yeah, it's not. It's like not she, easy she for needs her to be her own identity, yeah. not. Oh, that's my first deck. Yeah. So you wouldn't recommend it. You wouldn't do it again. No. Only when I'm, if I'm like, when I'm with the one, I'm starting kids, a family. Inshallah. That's when okay. I'll be very public about it. Okay. But for now, I've found that the more you keep it private, the less drama you have. Yeah, you because don't need to. You have. We, we, with everybody, there's a certain percentage of their following who are absolute psychopaths. Yeah. The larger your following, the higher the number of psychopaths there are. <laughs> yeah. So they are going to want to cause drama. Always. Yeah. And they've got time. Yeah. You would be so surprised how much time these ti these people have to find the information, send it to this person, write the comments. So it's better to just yeah keep it private.
But I mean, it's it's, it's up to the individual because sometimes yeah. it's nice to see relationship stuff, but yeah. you don't want to overdo it. Because yeah. if you overdo it, people are like, okay, great. Like, yeah, but we get I think we forget people aren't always happy for everyone. And yeah. that's the problem with social media because the people that spend the most time in it usually are the ones that aren't that happy. And yeah. so you can attract a lot of that hate. So, so yeah, going back to the original point, yeah. like I, I generally would, if I'm approaching someone for the first time, I would mm -hmm. prefer to do it in person. Right. And... I don't mean doing it in a bar or a club because mm -hmm. you're not going to find the right woman there. Yeah. You barely have a proper conversation anyway. Yeah. But it'd be in the daytime if I see somebody... Is a gym a good place for you to meet people? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I always... I, I understand that women are there to... I mean, obviously some of them want attention, but mm -hmm. some of them just want to go to the gym and work out. Yeah. And they are getting hit on a lot anyway by yeah. different guys so I don't want to be the fifth guy that's gone up to him and be like hey you, don't, you need to help me yeah, yeah but like, you might be the guy that she's hoping yeah. does do that so what I usually do is if I do like for someone who I like yeah. I will wait until they've done the workout okay. and then I'll maybe try and catch them afterwards that's but not like go stand there like a little weirdo yeah, in the change room asking her she's <laughs> using this and uh, don't do that just wait till she's finished and then mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a gentleman way to yeah. do it yeah and yeah the you're more than likely going to have a much higher chance of like some, for, some sort of a decent a, relationship yeah. if you meet somebody in like day-to-day -day life and scenarios. Yeah. So if you're at the beach, like a nice chilled out beach mm. club or the gym. Yeah. Doing something that you both would be doing anyway, it's a mm. good way to know if you've got some similarities. So, yeah. um, so um, the next question is about dating Yeah. and the first date. From my experience... Mm -hmm. A mistake which a lot of men make is they they try go all out on the very first date, right? And not only does that set the expectations quite high, yeah, but you end up potentially investing a lot of time and money in something which isn't really going to work yeah. out. So what I always recommend is sometimes if I go on the first date, just go for a walk, or go for a coffee, right. and then within the first 10, 15 minutes, you can see but if you're going to vibe with someone. Somebody or not. like you can do that because she already knows what you bring to the table but sometimes girls will be like oh he's not in I don't know like say if she just met a random guy she doesn't know what he is and she's thinking he doesn't want to invest or do anything depending on the type but it does weed out that girl so, so yeah. you you think that person should take them on a fancy date no I think take them where you would be going anyway so if your normal day-to-day -day life, you go for dinner and you go for Nando's, take her to Nando's. Mm -hmm. If your normal day-to-day -day life is going to Namos, take her to Namos. You, this is what I always say but to If you me. ask a girl, hey, do you want to go to Nando's? She's, she's but, not going to like that though. Some girls, but if that's your day-to-day -day life and that's her day-to-day -day life, if that's not her day-to-day -day life, you've already cut the crap. You're not compatible. Mm. So what I always say to men is women should come into your world. You be the man, she comes into your world. Now, your world doesn't have to be five star, but you take her, so even if it's a case of like, you can't afford a lot, that's not the problem, but you take her to a coffee shop where you can afford two coffees, or you take her to, if you're going for a uh, Nando's, you can, you can cover the bill. I always just say, take women into your world. That's the leadership. You're coming into my world now. So do where I would normally go to eat. You're coming where I normally go to eat. Now, where I normally spend my day. Now, if you take, if you're going out of your way and you're doing something you wouldn't normally do you're not compatible mm -hmm. but if you're taking her and doing something that you would normally do well even if that's kfc if that's a shisha or whatever it is she's coming and seeing into your world now if she fits perfect if she doesn't fit no worries but it's not your take her into your world uh, so i always say you hold her hand and you take her into your world that's my advice if you want to be mm -hmm. the leader in the connection who should pay on the first date and you know what i'm gonna say men uh, you know what i'm gonna say I, I, of course Mm -hmm. Of course, but I. But the thing is, I'm from a different culture. But I, yeah. I, no, but I can't understand. I mean, the the woman paying on the first date. I, I just think that's ludicrous. Yeah. But the splitting situation. <laughs> if I was to say. <laughs> oh, can we split this? Like, <laughs> I've already ruined it. Yeah, but the I thing feel. is, I understand for, like, in British culture, because the women are feminists and they do want to split it. I can understand it. But in Dubai culture, it's just, um, there's girls that know that they could go with a different man and never even have to fidget. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a bit harder. But it, I do understand it in different cultures, because in different cultures, the women insist on paying and splitting. So I understand mm -hmm. whatever works for you. But for me, and growing up in a uh, Muslim environment and being from Dubai it's just uh, you know you, you don't yeah the, the only <laughs> time I would allow it yeah would be if 
We'd already had a couple of dates. Yeah. She had she maybe invited me yeah. somewhere. And it's not, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing yeah. fancy. It's like paying for some uh, it, some food, which isn't really that expensive. She wants to do it. Sometimes a woman's itching to do something back. She's always itching to do something back. Um, and so you give her an opportunity to do something back. But at the same time, in in the uh, in the first day, she won't feel like it's a date if she split it. Mm-hmm. She would feel like she went to see a friend. And I think it's very dependent upon how much money she's earning as well. Yeah. Like if I can, if I know she's not making that much money, yeah. then I would never yeah. allow her to pay. Yeah. But if I know she's got a good job and she's making dough, that'd be mm. like, well, okay, but you can pay you for that one. one. thing I've noticed, uh, women that are hyper successful, men say they like hyper successful women and they like independent women. But what hi- independent women find is when we become like more financially stable, men don't give us the same investment. Whereas if we're a bum and don't have a job, they actually invest in us more. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's true? I think so. This yeah. is a question which I wanted to ask you mm. is if you find, if you have a, a man who's very masculine yeah, and they are together with a woman who has a lot of masculine traits, yeah. like they're very alpha, mm. very independent, don't mm. need a man, whatever. Do you think they can date? Because my experience of dating these alpha women yeah doesn't end well no we clash. it doesn't end well but here's the reason i would say because a lot of people say oh you know when women earn more than men they're more likely to divorce them and more likely to end it but the real reality is the reason why they're more likely to end it is because men take their foot off the pedal when the woman is in the, uh, financially stable with that same man will meet a, a, a woman who's unemployed uh, sits at home and watches tiktok all day and give her an allowance mm. and support her and take her dinner and do all of these things but that woman who's hustling and working hard he doesn't even like uh, think to grab a, uh, her lunch but, uh, so that's why she gets resentful that I, I'm working hard and because I'm working hard you're investing less mm-hmm. when really we should be rewarding the hard work because they still like to yeah. be looked after it's well, not a financial thing for me because of the way I'm wired mm-hmm. I just would not allow that to be the case yeah. if she's super successful she's making loads of money yeah. I'd be like I, like, there's no way yeah. that she could be out doing me like I have to be out yeah. doing her Yeah. which is why I've noticed when I've been in a relationship with someone who was super smart and they're, they're making a lot of money and yeah. if anything they're probably more intelligent than me Yeah. maybe like, I know more about certain topics than she does but mm. she's overall a really smart girl yeah I find that really motivating and it actually it really encourages me to level up. Yeah. I remember as I think this was 2021 I was dating someone and she was extremely smart and she yeah. was ca- kind of she's uh she, she's a a healer. Right. So she's very much into psychology. Oh, okay. But very smart. Yeah. Very well read and being with her really encouraged me to level up okay. because I wanted to impress her. That's good but the thing is but I, I, I know a lot of guys will probably feel but inferior. it might inspire a man but it doesn't inspire him to invest in her and women still seek investment what happens is as the woman gets more successful I know it sounds stupid because you're like you can do it yourself they end up feeling like no one's looking after them Mm-hmm. And what happens is, I, I always say to women, just be a damsel in distress. Always be a damsel in distress because when you show a man you're independent, he treats you like you're independent. And she, then they lose that dynamic of like being looked after. So if you want that feminine masculine dynamic, you almost have to be the damsel in distress because men do take the foot off the pedal when they know that you are financially stable. Mm-hmm. They let you do it yourself, but they, with another woman who's not so smart and not so successful, they do everything for. So women feel like they're almost shortchanged with. And they become successful I, I from in my experience so speaking of dating how do you know if you've been friend zoned or not um the response responsiveness from women Mm -hmm. this is all it boils down to if you are trying to contact a woman and you're getting delayed response and busy scheduling she's not interested it's really that simple when a woman likes you she will cancel plans she cancels plans she responds immediately she becomes available when she doesn't really like you that much she's unavailable it's Mm -hmm. really that simple she and um i always think you as a man friend zone yourself People can friend zone themselves or they don't. How you friend zone yourself is by not making your intentions clear. Mm -hmm. There are men that I'm friends with but are still not in my friend zone because they'll always make a flirty comment. They'll always remind me that they're interested in some way. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm trying to put you in the friend zone and you keep coming out of it. They remind, so I can't put them in the friend zone. Do you think men and women can be friends? Yeah, I do. But it takes a level of, uh, like both of them have to not be attracted to each other. 
Yeah, and I think you miss out on life when you aren't friends with the opposite sex. You miss out on so much in life、mm. because there's so many times where you might be fighting with your partner and you talk to your female friend and she's like, "I can't believe you said that to you." And you talk to your male friend, and you're like, "Don't be stupid. You know what that means? He's just a bit tired." Blah blah. blah. And they give you so much free game.、Mm-hmm. They give you so much free advice. All of my videos, a lot of people be like, "How do you understand the male brain so well?" A lot of the time, it's because I'll call a male friend and they'll tell me, "This is what it means when your man is doing this. This is what." It Means when he does that, they tell you everything. Do you think if they had the opportunity, they would? Absolutely. <laughs> They're not blind. <laughs> <Yeah> . They'll do it, but they're、mm. not going to have the opportunity. Yeah. yeah, they're not going to. It's not about would they. It's the could they.、Mm-hmm. If there's no could, then they can't. Yeah. See, this is this is a big problem I have had in、mm. a lot of my relationships. Yeah. It's being having other female friends、mm-hmm. because it has tended to be the case that they've they've interested. Been attra- not not. Well, I don't know if they're interested or not.、Mm-hmm. Maybe they are,、mm-hmm. but they've been attractive. Right, that's a problem. Okay, so I I can actually be friends with an attractive, attractive woman. woman. Yeah, so I have discipline.、Mm-hmm. Like I don't feel the need to sleep、yeah. with every single attractive woman I、yeah. see. If I did, I wouldn't get anything done. Yeah. So I have I have these female friends, and I want to continue、mm-hmm. having those relationships with them. Usually because they're very intelligent. Yeah. And just spending time with them. I I learn a lot,、mm-hmm. or they're just very they're very good contact to have. Yeah, they're amazing. But I have had so many arguments about this、mm. because they they don't believe me. But you know what? I think that, like you, like I said, you gain so much. And I think that men that don't have female friends, they hypersexualize women. They get nervous around women. They think women are this really strange enigma. They lose their ability to have charm around women. But when you have lots of female friends, you learn, realize they're flawed. You realize they're stupid. You realize like what makes they, it removes their mystery. So、mm. I think men that never have female friends and women that never have male friends, they get overexcited when they're around the. Opposites and gender. Whereas when you've always had male or female friends, you recognise it's just a person. Whereas when you don't, you think it's a potential sexual contact, and you get too excited. I think it's actually a bad thing if they have no male or no female friends, because then they tend to get too excited around the opposite gender. It might. So let's scenario. We're in a relationship.、Mm-hmm. Would you let me have hot friends? No. <laughs> That, just, that goes against your point, though. I know, I know. Depends how hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I,、um, I, I don't mind. I know. To be fair, I wouldn't mind too much. But if she posts a lot of hot stuff, I would rather you not see your n- female、mm. friend's naked body. Let's say, for、yeah. example, she's in the fitness industry. Right. Well respected in the fitness industry. Yeah. We go to work out together. Yeah. Thoughts. Um, in that scenario, if it feels like,、mm, and she's hot. Mm. Mm. Really hot. Yeah, no, great body. You just change the body's、job. unbelievable. Yeah, no. Why are you adding <laughs> insult, insult to injury? No, no, you're definitely not allowed. No, no, it's just not appropriate. Okay. There's boundaries. So I can't, I can't have any hot There's friends. There's boundaries to friendships. Mm-hmm. There's boundaries to everything in、We're、a friendship. We're just working out,、um, but there's boundaries to that because I, I know when you're working out, and I've had male and female <laughs> personal trainers. Personal trainers working out with them is not a good look. Because、yeah. working out is it's it's not、Keep、the right、touching. boundaries. It's not the right friendships comes with boundaries,、mm. I, and the reason why I would allow my、um, uh, partner to have female friends is if he understood the boundaries without me saying them. Whereas if there's fe- female or male friends where you have to teach them the boundaries, then you, then it's a problem. But it's、mm. harder in your industry. It's really hard in your industry. Yeah, because. Yeah. I mean, even it's the collaboration. So、mm. I don't want to just only collaborate with men. Yeah, it's it's good for business、mm. and adds more. Particularly, the majority of my viewers are men anyway. Right. So if there's a female involved, like they、It's、get、amazing. all excited about、yeah. it. They want to see the interaction. They want to、mm-hmm. just maybe have something to look at as well. Yeah, of course. So I want to continue doing that.、Mm-hmm. And there's always been problems. Would you just would you ever be with someone who's in the industry, like a fitness model, and make it easier for yourself? Yeah, yeah, that might be a good look. But I've noticed female fitness models who have a big following—they're pretty crazy. Why? D- well, it depends. <laughs> it depends. There's there's some who are like really sort of like well respected. Yeah. And they don't show much. Would you they, mind? They, they have you, they have this. They can still be sexy, but they、mm. don't show too much. But、yeah. the majority of These fit, female fitness influencers, their asses everywhere. Yeah, and would you mind if your girlfriend had an OnlyFans? Oh yeah. Why would you mind? Because everybody would be able to see <laughs> the private parts. Okay, and, that and I、you. wouldn't necessarily,、um, I wouldn't 
respect her values. I think it's very important. If I'm going to be in a relationship with someone or we're going to get married, we have to have the same values. Yeah. And it's something which I disagree on. Right. I think that that woman has taken the easy route. Right. You know, even with myself, I have done it the hard way to mm -hmm. get to where I am today. Mm -hmm. I have had many offers. Mm -hmm. I could have done some pretty degrading things. Yeah. I could have got OnlyFans myself and made $100,000 a month yeah, you could easily. Have easily done that, yeah. But I was like, no, nah, because okay. it goes against what I stand for. Mm -hmm. I have too much pride. Okay. So I would much rather do it the harder way, the slower way. Yeah. And then even when he gets to that point, it's way more satisfying. Yeah, and you can talk is. about how you got there. But if yeah. you say, if I'm doing this podcast, I'm like, oh yeah, staying in this apartment because I do OnlyFans. People <laughs> will be like, yeah. Okay, well, good one. And then it's, it tarnishes your reputation. It, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it does do so that. So with... Yeah. I could be friends with a woman like that. I could maybe have a short fling yeah. with a woman like that, but I couldn't... And I would respect her. Like, say, for example, yeah, the, yeah, no the girl I met in Bali, yeah. she's, you know, got a family out of poverty. So I respect that. I yeah. understand that. Mm -hmm. But... But starting a relationship is a different kind of level of yeah, respect. I, yeah. I just... I would not do that. Fair enough. Fair but, enough. But... Um, you know, to each their own. To, yeah, to respect each, everybody who's doing that, but it's just not my thing. To each their own. Yeah, to each their yeah. own. I'm, we're not here to judge anyway, so, but to each their own. Here's another good question. Mm -hmm. We're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Would you let me go on a lad's holiday? No. No. I'm very strict. <laughs> I'm very strict. It's like, I'm very strict, but I'm very, but I, it would depend on the age and stage and all these things. But it's, this is what I tend to do. I tend to be with people who are just not that way inclined too much anyway. So if it's a case of you're going and it's like all the time and it's all this, that and the other, I don't really like that. But if it's occasionally here and there, I still don't like it, but I might be less difficult. But what if you wanted to go on a girls' trip somewhere? I don't do I don't do that. This don't is do a, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't do that. I, I'm not a girls' trips kind of woman. See, see what I do is mm -hmm. I, I'm flexible, mm -hmm. and if it's something which they want to do, yeah, I don't say don't do it. Yeah, I have I just give them the option. Yeah, would well, you so, mind so if it goes so, on girls' so, trips? So if they want to do it, yeah, they can do it. Yeah, but how they react to that mm -hmm. will determine whether or not I continue with that relationship. Okay. So let's say for example, I say. You know, maybe she's talking about it or her friends have mentioned it. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, she'll go. Yeah. But if she goes, <laughs> then I'm like, okay, you would much rather be yeah. with your friends partying in Mykonos than yeah. to be with me. Mm. And I'd be like, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to go to Ibiza yeah. or I'll go somewhere else. Yeah. And then it just gets But, here, but here's my thing with uh, holidays and stuff like that. When, when you say, oh, I trust my partner, you can trust your partner, but there's environmental factors in our behavior. And we, I would prefer a partner who doesn't put themselves in that environment, just like I don't put myself in that environment because I respect the boundaries mm -hmm. of the relationship. It doesn't mean you're caged, but it, there is boundaries towards everything. And there could be a holidays here, there and somewhere. No, and it's not the end of the world, but if somebody who's got that craving mm. all the time is not somebody who's ready to settle down. That's yeah, what I was when saying. I'm in relationships, I barely go out and party. Yeah, especially when you live in Dubai, like you don't need to go on as many holidays. You live in a holiday. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't need it so much. But you, you wouldn't mind too much if she goes. It de depends where she's going and who she's going with. Okay. Because I'd, I, I still want her to be free and mm -hmm. to live her life. Like yeah. she doesn't always have to be with me. If anything, it's quite nice to have a bit of time apart every now and then. Yeah, I just but think it, watch people do what they truly want in life and then pick your poison. <laughs> who would actually not require you to be controlling? Mm -hmm. who would naturally be in line with your values and that's the person you select rather than choosing someone that's got completely different morals and like holding them by the throat to be like the way you want them to be just pick correctly but I think as well if, you, if you've if you been told you can't do this mm -hmm. it makes you want to do it more yeah I suppose. but if you've been given the option you can do it if you want to mm -hmm. then you're like oh, okay and then you probably just don't end up doing it anyway yeah I think especially with men if you let them think they've got the option they'll do what's usually the right thing but when you try and control them they kind of rebel mm -hmm. as much as possible so yeah you got to just let them be but I will I will always have this issue particularly at this point in time because of what I do the nature of what I do mm -hmm. I do need to travel yeah. to network collaborate make like I can't always just do these podcasts in yeah. Dubai at some point 